I mean, if you do it in one shot, fantastic. I've done multiple mixes, multiple studio mixes in one shot. And you know what? I'm a fucking hero. Hello again, everyone. My name is Mr. Linden, and I'm here for episode three of How I Make a Mix. And this is How I Made a Mix for C89.5, the dance station up here in Seattle, Washington. And I've already recorded, and previous episodes were me picking tracks or sort of organizing them a little bit. And then the following episode was me mixing and recording. And now we are going to get into how I edit the recording. And after going through the... I've, I've already sort of initially looked at the file a little bit and done a few things, but not much. It was... It looks clearly like <laughs> I had my two channels at slightly different levels. So as you can see here on this waveform, it is very... It's, it's very... It just... It just it varies, basically. It varies. Let's just say that. And so what I'm going to have to do is go through and sort of normalize the volume, but then I'm also going to have to edit out these uh, portions where I decided that I didn't like the mix and then went back and redid them. So first things first, in the video, you can hear this portion here where I started and then I decided to change the audio that I was recording at the time for the video, I went from the master out to the cue to like the headphones out. That way you could hear exactly what I was hearing. And then, so that initial, that, that video will have a lot of clashing and you can hear me queuing up the next track and you sort of just get the idea of why a lot of times, <laughs> me specifically, I don't know, maybe maybe other DJs too, when they're recording, they might be kind of like, meh, I don't know about this mix. But then when you get done and you go through everything, clean it up, and then it's like, okay, it's actually really good. Because you didn't hear the output. You heard the 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 mixing and the prep and the, and the cueing and all that stuff. So you don't actually experience the mix the same way that a listener experiences it, which is kind of an interesting thing. So, first things first here, I just kind of delete the intro because there's no need for this. I gotta figure out, there's a buzz in my in my mixer. It's probably power, who knows. So, so actually, let's, let's just take care of this right now. What I'll do is I'll just loop this and then uh, put an EQ in there. That, see here it has these little spikes so I'm just going to go ahead and pull them down uh, and if we just do this now this will also pull down these in the um, the actual mix but I think if it's narrow enough it might I see I don't know I might have to use a different Let's see here. I might have to use something different. We'll go ahead and close this and switch it to notch filter. Yeah, notch filter. Okay, so now ugh, it's still irritating, but um, we gotta take care of it. So turn these off and then take six and move it here. I wish I could zoom in. Why can't I zoom in? So the nice thing about the notch filter is super notchy. So we'll just hit these couple. And then the thing is, is that during the mix, you're not going to hear, you're not going to hear any of this stuff. Because this is just, okay. This is me being super anal. Okay. So we got that going. So now what we'll do is just um, select the whole thing and then go ahead and apply it. And then that just takes care of that right off the bat. Um, and we'll see. It, it might not um, be too... Yeah, see, man, it did a little bit, but I think it'll be okay. So I have Adobe Edition, which is a really powerful tool. There's also an Audacity available, and uh, a lot of this stuff is very similar. So nothing I'm doing is totally specific as far as the application goes. It's more just the idea. I actually used to do this with Audacity, and... 
Audacity actually has an envelope tool, which I prefer over the volume automation of Audition, but I'm not really going to get into that. So I'm just going to basically go through this and, and kind of, I'll probably go kind of quick because I don't want this to be a super long video um, and just sort of show you how I take care of all these little issues. So the first thing first is I have this edit that I would need to take out and if we go here, this was my take that I that I wanted. It's this one right here. So I already know that I don't need this. So the easiest thing is to just get rid of that right away. And then um, the drop is right here. I think the drop is right here too. Okay, it sounds like I... Uh, Okay, so what I'm going to use do is use that crash, that one right there. So, and then what I do is I just zoom in really far and find uh, a transient in in within the sound that's an obvious one to pick. And you just pop in there. So I'm just zooming in really far, basically here. And then I, I set a marker, and then that way. I think I hit reverse. Uh, and then that way it will, the, the selection will, oh crap, what happened here? <laughs> uh, I don't need this marker. Okay. I did need that marker, shit. <laughs> Welcome to editing. Uh, I don't need this marker. Okay. So I have that crash, and then I'm gonna go find the, the corresponding crash right here. And it should be. Okay, that crash is very quiet. Why is it so quiet? All right, so. Uh, I'm just fucking guessing here right now. Let's uh, just delete these and see how it sounds. Hmm. The timing sounded a little off. I think the problem is is that um, there was I was mixing in uh, a kick here, and so that that snare has a little bit more of a or that uh crash has a little bit more of a transient with a kick in there too so so what i'm going to do is back it up a little bit i guess and what i might this is this is a fucking tough one because what i might end up having to do is overlapping just slightly if i could go back i would not i would i would redo it further back without this mixing going in you know what? Fuck it. What I'm gonna do is uh, go on the drop here. So let's. So that sounds like that. Ah, it still has the little bit. Of... Okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna go on that drop. Uh, so I'll move the marker. Sorry if I'm moving a little fast. It's hard to see what I'm doing here, but. I just need to make sure that I'm, I'm on the kick here, the drop, and then go back. I'm, I'm just using uh, my scroll wheel and um, shift option and command to, to kind of go through here. Scroll wheel by itself just zooms in and out. Shift option, sh uh, option goes in and out. Shift goes side to side. Uh, so... And then I'm going to move this one over here. And then it's... Okay, so that, that's a little... It goes bong, and then... Okay, so I'm keeping it at that drop. So I just wanted to double check and make sure I was getting the right thing. So 
it's after this little this little snare, and so it's gonna go right there, and then it was attached to that transient like so. Okay, so now you just basically because of the markers, you can just snap and delete. And then... <laughs> Yeah, see, I'm not sure I like that, so I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to put a mark, move a marker into the middle here, delete this one, and fix it a different way, and we'll go over that later. Okay, so next, there was another edit that was right here. Now, I'm going to assume that I need to go pretty far back. So, what you got to do is find like the number the one of a of a bar. Okay, and that's it. So, this is the number one of a bar, so we'll go ahead and put a marker there. And then um, go find the corresponding one over here. And you can just sort of see. So, this is how I do it. You see this little, this little line right here that corresponds right here. And there's these two, and then it goes up. So, it's going to be right around here. Oh, I went way too far back. This is going to be right here. Okay, so it's right there. Uh, so. so we'll just put another right there. And then what I do, like, what I do this, it's really, you can see the waveform was very, like, complex. So what I usually do is I select a lot right around it, like so, or like in between it. And then I add, um, add, add silence. So you just go insert silence. And then I'll just do um, zero, zero, one. Now just put a little tiny bit of silence in there. And now I can zoom in. And we don't need this frequency uh, analysis. I'm not. I'm not using any of that shit. So now you can go in and um, just like, you know, I know that the markers are really close, and we're talking like like milliseconds here. So if you just go in like this and and really uh, cut it out and then zoom way in, now it's a lot easier to. It's you just you can just see what's going on. So you can see I was off a little bit, so that's why I didn't do it. Now, what I'd look for is things like this. You have, and it's funny because they're just slightly different. You know, it could be um, whatever I was mixing at that time, or the EQ might be just slightly different. But this this little transient right here, and then right here, corresponds with this one right here. So what we'll do is zoom in really far and just hit the like one of the top spots of it, and then just put a marker there, and then we'll zoom in really far. It's this one right here, and just put a marker on the, one of the top spots of that, and and that's close enough because no one's gonna fucking know the 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 nanosecond <laughs> difference between those. And so we'll delete these two markers, and then it, when you select, it'll snap to the markers, and then you just delete, and now it should just go, and we'll <laughs> can't tell shit. So yeah, well, uh, that was easy. Um, and I think that that was it, really. I didn't, oops, um, I didn't really do, uh, I'm trying to think. I don't think I really made any other edits. Any other things where I had to go back and fix anything. So, so we have this. We'll go ahead and delete this marker again. And you'll see why. Uh, okay, so I just have this one marker. Yeah, 
Okay, so now I just have the one marker, and you'll understand what I'm doing here in just a second. So what I'll do is uh, create a multi-track session because I need to do this anyway because I'm going to be overlaying um, X Files uh, dialogue and then um, in the intro and outro. So um, we'll just call this C89 mix, and I have to get this done tonight. So this is definitely happening. All right, so uh, this goes in here. So now I have. Um, this marker and I just click on it and then split split clips under split so just I just basically split the clip here so now I can um, now I can take it and put it down on another track okay so now come on Jeremy work it out uh, now I wasn't happy with the way that these two were blending so what I'll do is, because there, there should be the exact same BPM, what I'm going to do is zoom way the fuck in here. And now you can see the difference between uh, what the waveforms look like when something else is being mixed in with it. So, um, okay. Oh, undo, undo. Um, okay. So just keep zooming in here. And I'm going to put my cursor over this, e, this uh, transient right there. And then you just take this and put it right there, and it should be pretty freaking close. I don't know, maybe not. Oops. Oh, oh, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Okay. All right. Uh, now, now, um, this isn't what it's going to sound like, but I want to listen to it to make sure it matches up. <laughs> Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so for now, let's see. Okay, so this right here is, this is the volume. And what I want to do is just kind of fade it because it's going to, the way it's set up right now, it's not really going to phase or anything like that. So I can... Um, Faded out completely here. God, I keep adding waypoints. Delete keyframe. Uh, okay, so and then uh, you want to also uh, let's see find about find about the midpoint here, and that's about where you want the max to hit. Because what's going to happen is uh, they're additive, so if you don't get the crossover just right you'll get like a blip, you'll get like a, a volume boost, but it shouldn't be too bad if it's like right in here. So let's take a listen. Okay, that definitely did a thing. So let's uh, not do that. We'll take this out, move this over here. Okay, see, it still did it. So there's a crossover here that isn't working. Whoops. That, I'm happy with that. Like, you're not, no one's going to notice that. Okay. All right, so that's pretty cool. Uh, now the other thing we have to deal with is the... Um, the changes in volume. Now, this is uh, just a royal pain in the ass. And um, you can fix it with compressors and stuff. I like to, I prefer to not do it too much because you get a definite like sound to it by adding compressors. So what I generally do is I automate the volume, which is super time consuming and kind of a pain in the ass. But it's really just a matter of doing shit like this where you... You're like, okay, well, this is here, so I'm going to bump this up like this. And then if you watch down here on the levels, so it's it's like over here it's peaking right around negative 3. And so we just don't want it to really go up above negative 3, and don't, we don't want it to drop down too much further. Like, we expect this to be quiet because it's a, drop, it's a breakdown, but...
see here. This is this is the overlap between the two tracks, and then the the new track comes in here. So what I'm going to do is just kind of boost it a little bit here, like that. Just, and just keep an eye on this meter here. Okay, so I just wanted I wanted to make sure that the the volumes are the same across those two clips. So I put it up to 1.8. Um, okay, so generally the way I Generally, the way I deal with this is I just add some uh, cube, some uh, keyframes, and then just bump bump down the blend. So this is a blend. The blend pops up a little bit in in, um, in uh, decibels, and so again, just keep an eye on this right here. You want it to just generally hit around where, where the rest of it does. So by ducking it a little bit right there, it makes it so it doesn't peak. okay for this to be a little quieter because it's a breakdown as long as that drop comes back up to negative three and then right here it's another portion where it gets loud so, so what I'll do is just take this little section here and then drop it down back to zero and that should you know, you can see it's still hovering around negative three so you can basically use uh, this size as a guide and um, size is a guide where to put this and so it makes it pretty easy um, it's just time consuming so this is a breakdown don't need to fuck with that um, just keep an eye on that uh, this portion right here just make sure that it stays around negative three It's really mostly about making sure that the songs don't don't uh, teeter totter between volumes. Okay, so this like we go deep track is a little quiet. So I'm gonna put a keyframe here, keyframe here, and then it comes back. This, this is probably okay here. So what I'll do is put a keyframe here and here, and then just select this whole thing and pull it up like this. And when I do this, I'm, I'm clicking on the command key, and that allows me to pull up this uh, whole section between the two keyframes. And just, just kind of scroll through and make sure it's, uh, it's around negative three, which it isn't. So I'm gonna bump it up just a little bit more. And that should be that should be good. I'm, I'm basically what I'm doing is I'm getting it close, and then I'll um, go back with a compressor and just kind of normalize everything. Else. to see and none of that is very loud so
perhaps what I should do is bump that back up a little bit. You know what? We're just going to keep it up with where it was. I just realized that uh, the way I have this set up, I'm looking at a different monitor than I was. So I'm going to move this and move this. And that's going to be confusing. <laughs> All right, there. Now I'm looking at it. That'll, that'll help. Okay, so... Just continuing through here. Making sure it stays around negative three. Other thing here is that I was trying. I need to get it down to uh, 48 minutes. Uh, so, I mean, 58 minutes. Uh, so let's, yeah. So, and I don't have any more room after I've deleted those things. Um, I took out like seven minutes by doing that, but I have to edit it down to I believe it's 58. Um, so let's put a marker there. And we'll see. That should be okay. That that should uh, yeah, that should be okay for for my purposes. Uh, now the the bummer thing is I had this other track I wanted to play and I totally forgot. And it's really cool, but I don't think I'm going to uh, mess around by re-recording i just don't have the time i have to get this done tonight <laughs> so i don't have the time um it was there's a moby track that plays when Mulder finds you know out what happened to his sister and it's called my weakness and i found a, kind of a hard-hitting sort of remix of it that was a bootleg of it that's pretty cool i was going to play that but i just don't think that a it's a little hard and so it might not kind of vibe with what is going what else is going on in this in this mix and it is also just a lot it's a bit more work because basically what i would have to do is find the tracks that i want to it to i want, need to find the track i want to replace it and then mix the track before and after into it and so it's it's a bit of a thing um i would have to probably record over this bang bang track um and then i just don't have that i don't have the time to do it it's unfortunate but we're going to move on to inserting the X-Files stuff in there. So let me find that real quick. Okay, so I've loaded those in here. Um, the intro, I want to be this, where Mulder and Scully talk about stuff. And uh, Mulder says one of my favorite lines, where he's hurt, and she's like trying to warm him up. And she tries to like get him up, to snuggle up with him. He's like, I don't want to wrestle. And it's just like a great little moment in Mulder and Scullyverse. Um, and if you don't know about this stuff, I apologize for uh, nerding out about it. So, ugh, delete tracks. There we go. Okay, so... Okay, so what I have here is yeah, what happened? All right, Jesus Christ on the crutch, Jeremy. Learn to use your apps. All right, so. Yes, I did too. 
So I think this is where I want to start. Them. I don't want to wrestle. Yeah. Tee. Over here. But where are they today? Mothman, seriously? Mothman? Really? Yeah. But there seem to be only two of them. Hey, who did you identify with when you were a kid? Okay, so... What I like to try to do is get the stuff to, to work with the drops and stuff, so... Or to get the little moments to work with the drops. So, I'm probably going to... First, I you know, you just gotta listen. like to do is to have the vocals start right when he says that just sing anything because I don't want her to sing Jeremiah was a bullfrog because it's it's terrible <laughs> which is the point so okay so we want it to go right there so what we'll do is uh, put the drop where you know put the the, the lead up to where we want it to be Sing something, I know you're awake. Okay, so I like that. Um, and then let's see what is before this and see like what. But where are they today? Mothman? Really? Yeah. But there seem to be only two of them. Okay, I'm not mad about that. a lot of blank space here so what I'm gonna do is split it let me remember what the split uh, clip apple, apple K so I'm gonna split that and then because what I want I want him to say I don't want to wrestle right at the drop so we'll just take that put it there I don't want to wrestle. I like it. And then you just overlap that because it doesn't really, there's nothing going on there, so it's not a big deal. And then... Ugh. Ugh. Okay. I've never been married to Barney, though. I guess it's you. But where are they today? A lot of blank space in this because it's uh, you know it's a TV show so there's stuff happening so I 
think that what we can do is try to eke a little bit more dialogue out. Never been married to Barney, though. I guess. All right, so they're talking about um, the Flintstones for some reason. And what I'm going to do is at least get it to a point where you kind of get some sort of context. Oh, for Christ's sakes. Yes, hey, who did you identify with when you were Never a kid? Never been married to Barney, though. Wilma or Betty? Identify with Betty's bus line. Hmm. Okay. So, I'm gonna basically what I'm gonna do is wedge this in here and make it work because uh, we can, because it's not hard. So, um, if we, if I just go in here and Hey, who did you identify with when you were a kid? Wilma or Betty? Identify with Betty's bus line. Yeah. Okay, we definitely don't want that yet. But then she never could have been married to Barney, though. I never been married to Betty's bus Barney, line. though. And kids were cute. So, she said the kids were cute, and that is superfluous, superfluous, delete, and move. Hey, who did you identify with when you were a kid, Wilma or Betty? Identify with Betty's bus line. Never been married to Barney, though. But where are they today? Mothman? Really? Yeah. But there seem to be only two of them. Okay. So it doesn't really make sense, but the, it's not really, it doesn't really need to make sense. And really, the, the, the music will sort of distract from that anyway. So let's check it out. Hey, who did you identify with when you were a kid? Wilma or Betty? Identify with Betty's bus line. Never been married to Barney, though. But where are they today? Mothman? Really? Yeah. But there seem to be only two of them. Perfect. Okay, so I got that, and now, all right, so I want it to, it's gonna, it looks like it'll, this will work really well, because it starts in the drop, and then keeps going, and then the outro ends at this drop, and then I can just fade out. The development of our cerebral cortex has been the greatest achievement of the evolutionary processes big deal. While allowing us the thrills of intellect and the pangs of self-consciousness, it is all too often overruled by our inner instinctive brain, the one that tells us to react, not reflect, to run rather than ruminate. Maybe we have gone as far as we can go, and the next advance, whatever that may be, will be made by beings we create ourselves using our own tech. 
Tac. 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 The one that tells us. Our inner instinctive brain. The one that tells us. Often overruled by our inner instinctive brain. The one that tells us to react, not reflect, to run rather than ruminate. Maybe we have gone as far as we can go, and the next advance, whatever that may be, will be made by beings we create ourselves using our own tech. So I had actually made these to be 124 BPM. But then, uh, what you, well, I didn't explain that I did hit there for a second was um, I, I stretched it just a little bit so that it would work. And so that took these out of the BPM. So I'm going to, uh, let's see, so we got. So I'm going to stretch it just a little bit here. So it lines up there. So you got one, two, three, four, five. So it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, what are happening? What's happening to my, god damn it. Oh, well, apparently I'm setting a shit to markers. Anyway, I'm just gonna squish this together like so. Okay, and now it should go to the beat. Wrong oh, tech. 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 Technology. 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 Life forms we can design and program not to be ultimately governed and constricted by the rules of survival. Or perhaps that step forward has already been achieved on another planet by organisms that had a billion years head start on us. If these beings ever visited us, would we recognize what we were seeing? And upon catching sight of us, would they react in anything but horror at seeing such mindless, primitive, hideous creatures? Shut up. Okay, so then I have Scully saying, shut up, Mulder. So what I'm going to do is uh, give it a little more space to breathe. Technology. Life forms we can design and program back in anything but horror at seeing such mindless, primitive, hideous creatures. Shut up, Mulder. Shut up, Mulder. Sure. Fine. I like it. Okay, so like I said, 58 sec 58 minutes. Take it here, just sort of fade it out, and we'll see how that sounds.
Hey, who did Hell you yeah. identify with when you were... All right, so now that I have this, what I want to just double check is the volume of the... Let's see if I can maybe duck. I don't want to wrestle. Uh, one of us has got to stay away, so... You sleep longer. You get tired, you wake me. I'm not gonna get tired. Why don't you sing something? No, Mulder. If you sing something, I'll know you're awake. Well, you don't want me to sing. I can't carry it. Down. Doesn't matter to sing anything. Happy, I'm happy. Cerebral cortex has been the greatest achievement of the evolutionary processes. Big deal. While allowing us the thrills of intellect and the pangs of self-consciousness, it is all too often overruled by our inner instinctive brain. The one that tells us to react, not reflect, to run rather than ruminate. Maybe we have gone as far as we can go. And the next advance, whatever that may be, will be made by beings we create ourselves using our own tech. 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 Technology. Life forms we can design and program not to be ultimately governed and constricted by the rules of survival. Or perhaps that step forward has already been achieved on another planet by organisms that had a billion years head start on us. If these hideous creatures. Shut up, Mulder. Sure. Fine. Whatever. This one's a little quiet, and uh, you can hear he says Scully. There's a little bit of an end of an E right there. Um, so I'm fading it up really quick and then see if this sounds better. Most primitive, hideous creatures. Shut up, Mulder. Okay, still so you can still hear the E. Shut up, Mulder. It's hard because he really overlaps that Scully with her. Shut up, Mulder. Shut up, Mulder. Sure, fine, whatever. It's nice that the, the strains of that outgoing synthy sort of stabby sound, while it pans up to the moon, that was from the episode Syzygy. Uh, kind of goes really well with that little drop in this remix of the X-Files theme and so they kind of blend together so it works pretty well. Nice. Okay, so now that I have that all basically put together, what I'm going to do is bounce it to a single track and then take a look at the, the volume differences based on like what I've done here. And then I'll do a few passes with a compressor and, and a high limiter and whatnot, and see, and we'll see what happens. First, though, it's really important to see what the bounce looks like because that will let me know how close I've gotten it as far as leveling some of the audio. So mix down, new session, entire session. Luckily, my computer is way faster than it used to be. All right, actually, that looks pretty freaking good considering there's drop, there's like a, a lot of breakdowns and whatnot. And so you can see it's pretty, pretty awesome. Now I know generally these um, transients that are like right here above negative three. So I was trying to kind of hit it at negative three, but you can see these transients right around negative three are just super minutia. Even though you pull back here and it looks like kind of crazy, it's really it's really not. It's like these little tiny transients that that you won't notice if they're gone. But before I so one option is just to do a hard limiter and then normalize it. Uh, here I'll just do it real quick just so you see. You go to a you just do a hard limiter um, and then you set it to negative three with uh, 
Uh, and then that just chops it right at the right at this line here. And then uh, what I would do is do a normalize to negative one, and that just pulls it all up to negative one or negative point one or whatever. So now it's kind of like you know, hey look, it's loud as it can be. And, and that's actually not bad, but just for shits and giggles, what I'm going to do is do a multiband compressor. Uh, let's do Classical Master. I, I just like, it's like a kind of a catch-all sort of um, thing. And we'll just see what, how that, what that does. Now what that should do is sort of make the waveforms come down a bit and make the baseline come up just a little bit. Just make it a little more sausagey. And now, if we cut it at, um, I don't know, like five, negative five, I'm sure I'm going to get hate. Like, any, if anyone who knows what they're talking about watches this, they're going to be like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? But, you know what? <laughs> this is how I do it, so... <laughs> I'm sure there's there's probably some some stuff going on in there where I'm losing like losing things, but uh, losing some frequencies or whatnot. But you know, I'll just normalize it to negative one. All right, so there we go, nice and sausagey. But it still has the the key to this though is that it still has these dynamics, and because you don't want you don't want these um, at least I prefer not to have these drops get super loud. It doesn't make any sense. You still want quiet parts to the songs or else you're going to get, it's going to be exhausting. So it's okay to have these dips in the volume. Um, and, and if you overdo it, that stuff will go away. You could just, you could just do a freaking loud max, you know, uh, master and it'll sausage the whole thing into a solid thing. And it looks like, and it sounds like ass because you still want this parts to be kind of chill. So, so now the next part is not one that I'm going to document, but it's basically me listening to it over and over again. Before, and I mean, I have to turn it in tomorrow, so there's really not a lot that's going to happen between now and then. But I'm just going to double check and make sure that I didn't miss, because you know there are a few parts. If you watched last episode, there's a few parts where I may have gone back and, and done stuff, but I think I got both of those. But you never know; I may have missed one and. If you're listening through it and then all of a sudden it skips back and you're like, oh, wait, what just happened? So I need to make sure that doesn't happen. Other than that, that is how I basically make a studio mix. I think the key takeaways are it's okay, in, in my opinion. I mean, if you do it in one shot, fantastic. I've done multiple mixes, multiple studio mixes in one shot. And you know what? I'm a fucking hero. You know, all praise me, whatever. But the fact of the matter is you're going to fuck up and it's okay to go back and um, just fix things. And so recapping the what I do is if I don't like a mix, I'll pause it. I'll go back to a notable spot in the previous song and then redo the mix. And, you, you know, like I did la this time, I might have to do it a couple of times. It, but then it's super easy to just set markers, set endpoint markers and on the matching spots of the two sessions and just delete everything in between it all done and then if i had to go back and actually re-record i know that i did this all at 124 bpm so it would be really easy for me to just re-record at um like a like i said if i wanted to put that track in that i that i was kind of wanting to have in there just re-record the the mix with the intro and outro tracks and then just splice it in it's really easy to do so i hope this helps and i hope that maybe you learned a little bit and uh, maybe got some permission to do some things that might be frowned upon i feel like i i don't know i i honestly don't uh really pay attention but it i could see how some purists would be like you know this isn't this isn't djing you should do it all in one take and yeah whatever I can if I really wanted to, but it's just, ain't nobody got time for that. So this is how I do it. And so once again, my name is Mr. Linden and DJ in Seattle. If this helped you, like and subscribe, leave a comment. Tell me why you didn't like it. Tell me if you learned something. Tell me if you have a tr 
tip or trick. Let me know how you do it. And I will see you next time. And most, like most of my content nowadays is mixes, but I'm trying to do little tutorials and shit like this too. So hopefully, hopefully I helped you and we'll catch you next time.